Okay. So first off, let me just ask this. Um, again, one of the coolest things about the movies in this particular festival is the casting. The male, very good, but I have to say she blows me away. Who is this woman? Where did you find her? And how did she learn that precise sort of, I did not love him? You know, she's just point on with everything. Yeah, she's she's absolutely brilliant, I think. Um, and without her, it, it obviously wouldn't have worked at all. Um, I have to say, I did not go and look for her. Um, she's... Well, she's done, as you can probably see, she, she's done years and years of theatre. Yes. And uh, she's a friend of Howard's. So he, he said, talk to her. She might be ideal. And <laughs> obviously, you know, I rang her up and it took a bit of persuasion, obviously, because of the nudity. Mm -hmm. And I think being, um, well, naked in theatre is something different than in film. Yes. And therefore we had long conversations but in the end she thought you this is exciting and i want to try this and yeah I'm, I'm very glad she did because obviously she made the film absolutely well and the second thing is i wanted to talk about the nudity element because of course all of us have seen nudity in film and in theater as well so my question to you is um what made you go that route because i wonder if it would have gone differently had it have been a conversation where she was lying in bed for instance versus the morgue so that's a two first of all start with the the election to use nudity and then on the other side of the fence was it always the the morgue because that's such a fascinating place to have filmed this story or the look of it yeah i think it always was because uh, i think to to have this this setup and this um yeah, it's difficult to say, but there is a time, you know, when people die, obviously, and then mm -hmm. there is a time at the moon, and that's a very different time, in a different setting, in a different mood and tone, etc. And I thought for this monologue she has, for this thinking back about life, etc., it needed to be that place. Mm -hmm. um, that was my feeling, and uh, yeah, it took again quite some time even in london to find a place that <laughs> would work really out. Yes. oh my goodness well the, yeah that does pose an interesting uh question doesn't it well plus two did it pose challenges for the actor herself meaning if it had been filmed in a different place because she's literally spending the whole time in that one shot in that one scenario like that is that challenging for her i think it was taxing to be honest and uh, even though we really tried to, well, make her comfortable sounds really nice, but make her at the least uncomfortable, maybe. But it is a very difficult, taxing and also scary situation because obviously she's lying there. Yes. Sometimes naked and everybody's staring at her. There is no place to hide, to go, whatever. And she's just there on that slab. That's a real slab. It's, it's you know, a real morgue slab. Mm -hmm. uh, very heavy, very cold, <laughs> very uncomfortable. And yeah, basically she was lying there for two days. So thank oh, you. Oh my gosh, two days. Holy cow. Um, yeah. Well, um, my next question for you is, because I'm an author, um, I'm always of the belief that every film, every TV series, or everything we all know starts with the composition of the written word. And in this particular project, I have to say the, the strong, it's obvious that the writing just blows it away. Not that this, the filmmaking is a whole nother level, but the writing in and of itself, just the way that story is told, it's fascinating to me. Um, how long did it take to prepare the actual dialogue for that? Because it sounds very well thought out and in advance and for quite some time. Well, you know, um, Mr. Barker just wrote it. I can't, uh, I didn't ask him like, how long did it take you? But ah. I know him quite well to say, uh, um, uh, well, it would, it would be a myth to say he, he spent years on it. That's really not how it is with him. Sure. You know, he has sometimes very, very good ideas. And then he's, I think his greatest strength really is with the language. I've got you. Know, you. you can discuss, discuss whether you like his themes, his ideas, etc. I mean, that's, you know, there are many opinions on that, but I think with language, there is, he's just really, very, very strong. I've got you. Now, was she given the ability to improv or was it literally just verbatim word for word? Um, well, we discussed it and I think we changed bits and bops that okay. we felt she and her that it didn't fit or it didn't sound right. Obviously, the author wasn't very happy, but he wasn't asked. So that's the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, some of us have a problem with that. Us writers sometimes are like, oh, good of you to just change 
everything. And now no, we no, have no, a no. We, no. Basically just, you know, so, sometimes, <clears throat> particularly with theater writers, things are just too long. Sure. So whatever we did, we just skipped things away and very little, actually. I get and you. I have to say, <clears throat> shame on the author. First, he didn't even notice. Only Ma. when he watched the film, he was like, oh, jolly, isn't there missing something? And then he went like, oh, you did this and you did that. And I was like, well, if you only notice, like, third time through it can't be that bad oh sure <laughs> absolutely now we because know. we didn't all get to see the lead actress or the lead male as a matter of fact to see their initial reaction were they pleased or or you know i noticed that actors sometimes have a tendency to to pick apart even their own work per se so was the end result something that they had hoped for and they were really very encouraged by what they saw on screen i think they agreed that it was um very well done and that it was really capturing the essence of what Howard wanted to say. Mm -hmm. And that because they both have worked with him and have worked, have done a lot of his work, they, they really know this universe. And they could see this is the universe actually in film now, not in theater. Sure. But to be honest, to say that they were very pleased, I, I can't <laughs> say that because it is just, again, even for, for I, I talked to Susie and she said, you know, I, I really like it, but I don't want to watch it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense. It does. Right. I mean, it, it does make sense because, uh, you, you know, it is obviously not the film you watch on Saturday night with popcorn to have a good time. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> bad. Um, now, we've talked a lot about I always like to find out what the audience response is, because, again, this is another one of those films that, uh, although you might think there's one interpretation to it, I see at least an additional second one. But that's oh, just yeah. me and my and my look and take on this. So audiences, have they given any general feedback when they walk away from there? What their feelings are about this or what they took away from it? Um, as you said, I think there are several interpretations, which is one thing I like because I don't like to say this is how it works and you oh, must sure. do this, right? Do um, that would be a bit, you know, simplistic. Oh, you're bad. But, uh, yes, terrible, actually. But, um, well, would you like to hear mine or what just people thought? <laughs> well, I can tell you, uh, at least from my perception. Or maybe you could say what you thought, because for me, that's more interesting. So I collect uh, opinions. <laughs> well, and I'll put it out to the audience as they're, as they're with us here, so anybody can chime in on what your interpretation was or perception of the film. Please, yes, for please, me please. personally, I think there's a resounding... Um, I see on one side of the fence, which is obvious by the dialogue, there, there seems to be... Uh, the start of a love and the end of another, the start of a life and a rebirth of another life. Um, all of that kind of, that basically that covers the whole thing in a nutshell. Also, the other thing I see is just remorse and regret and um, just almost wanting a rebirth of, of lots of things. Um, you know, but again, that's, that's the acting in part and the directing and of course, just beautiful words to act all that out. But that's my two cents. So the question is, what does the director see when she looks at it? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I'm not sure about rebirth, to be honest, but I think, yes, it is a circle and obviously there is contemplation and uh, regret and remorse, but also, you know, that that is how life often goes. Mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's what is beautiful, you know, the contradiction in it. She did this because she knew it was right, although it wasn't right for her. Sure. And I mean, that's, you know, that's life. That's Absolutely. like complicated and complex and often we do things for reasons we shouldn't, etc. And right. then there is obviously the other level with Doyle, who, you know, has a quite different uh, interpretation on everything. Uh, you could say, uh, you know, it goes against what she does, which is obviously the beauty here. Yes. But, you, but then again, you know, it's not, it's just... I wouldn't say it's a male interpretation of things because I think that's kind of typecasting, but sure. it, it is different. And I think it is, again, uh, curiously um, romantic, his interpretation. Mm. Even if a bit, as I said, a misconception of what is going on, clearly. Oh, sure. Absolutely. How about any of you folks that are in the room here? Any interpretations, perceptions, thoughts, comments, anything? I'm just curious. And the room might be silent, which is okay, too, because sometimes people don't have an interpretation, which is all right. Uh, I have to ask you, uh, once you released the film, how well did it do and what was the end result? Where did it end up going? This one in particular. 
Uh, well, you hear a bit of silence here. Because <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been the most, uh, let's say, successful release. Oh, because, no. No, it hasn't. Um, I think for a lot of people, it is just, is always where does this film belong? And, you know, I'm very happy for inputs because you watch a lot of films and you know a lot of festivals. But uh, what I always heard or what I often heard when I got actually feedback, which is, as you know, difficult from festivals, sure. is that if, for some people it's too theatrical. Um, and they say, oh, this is acted out theatre, which I don't think it is. Um, and we don't like acted out theatres. We're doing film here. So that was one thing. And the other thing is just that for a lot of people, it is just too strange. And I think too, again, to use this word, too taxing, mm -hmm. which I find very sad because I think, you know, festivals are actually, in my opinion, a place where you should expose yourself safely to films you can't see everywhere. That's right. The point, right? right. You know, I think to see things, I can go down the streets to a multiplex. Sure. But yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, yes. So that's in a nutshell the answer to this. I've got you. And of course, for those of us that are here in the room that don't know this, obviously, this is not the first project you've done. You obviously have a, a very impressive resume of different things that you've done. Um, can you tell everybody a little bit about some of the things that you've been up to lately creatively, things that you've put together that they might be able to check out? Um, yes, at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but uh, at well, the same period of time. Uh, I've done uh, actually a documentary again. Uh, I was told it was very alternative. I, you know, I don't see myself as, as alternative. I mean, not really. But sure. uh, about my uh, grandparents' apartment, they died, and I, I wanted to to you know to capture this process of a life basically disappearing. Mm -hmm. And so you know, and and again, there is no voiceover that explains everything, which is seems to be quite a problem for lots of people because they like explaining, but it is just imagery and sound. And um, that's, yeah, one thing I, I like very much. Oh, I bet. And of course, in your neck of the woods, I imagine, tell me a little bit about what it's like to create there in your neck of the woods. Cause obviously we're in the United States. I've talked to people from different parts of the country, but in your specific area, um, is art and cinema embraced well there? And that makes it much easier to be able to put things together in your country. I think, you know, I, as you probably can hear, I studied in London, which mm -hmm. uh, for me was a wonderful experience and very enriching. But then again, I did not study in Switzerland. So I'm a bit of an outsider here. I gotcha. And that doesn't make things easy because obviously if you have, you know, gone to old school here and you have made an MA there and then, you know, basically there are people who push your projects and... Having been in London, uh, you know, has been, as I said, a very a wonderful experience, which I do not regret, regret at all. Here we are. However, uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize any of this. I was quite naive. I just thought, ah, I want to make films. I want to go to this school in London. This is bloody wonderful. But when I came back, I realized, oh, I don't know anybody actually <laughs> in film here. And okay. bloody hell, what do I do? Oh, so, I <laughs> so it hasn't been quite easy as that. Yeah. Well, and of course, obviously, Switzerland is the home of my favorite actor of all time, Charlie Chaplin. Uh, one of the reasons I always wanted to do the Black and White Film Festival is I'm in, completely in love with everything Charlie Chaplin has ever done. So you're in the land of, of just, oh, gosh, I, I would love to come there one day, if nothing else, to see the museum, et cetera, and experience some of the most beautiful things are in, in your country. Um, now, as far as for the future, is there anything you have coming up in the near future that's being released, anything we should look out for? Um, as I said, if you if you like alternative things, as I've been told, I really think I know maybe documentaries aren't yours, but I think that's it's an interesting one because it, what I've heard with people uh, where I talked to um, is that it chimes in with their own experience. You know, when somebody dies, what happens? Sure. sure. What happens with all that stuff? <laughs> because you can't keep everything, can you? Of course not. Life has to go on, but it's a terrible process to go through to say, this will go to the skip and this will, I don't 
you know. So I think, yeah, I thought that was interesting. And other than that, you know, it's it's been COVID as anywhere. And... Oh gosh. Oh sure, you bet. It, it's been very, very taxing and very, very challenging. Um, you know. So what I can say to you, obviously, as the person who is co-founder and also someone who judges and screens films all the time, from my perspective, and I know I speak for Michael as well. One of the reasons why we accepted this film to actually screen it was because of the fact that it wasn't the norm. It's very often that we see lots and lots of films that are very normal that go along the traditional lines, you know, as far as the way things go. Um, some people would say that you have an artistic and artsy sort of film. Some people would say that it's an experimental film. I say, and it, I literally say that in my opinion, it is a, uh, a walkway to discovery of the human mind and the human heart. That's how I view your film. So that's very out of the ordinary. Very, very much so. Um, I'd like to read uh, the comment, actually, because I, I'm going to go into the chat here. And my dear uh, Chris had said, I loved it. I really think that the idea of regret and his contemplation on the difference between Mary and Jane was a very powerful message. Also, I'm not normally a fan of artistic films, but I love every second of this. I want to see more. I want to know where it goes beyond this as well. I love when a film leaves me thinking like that. Lovely, 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 Chris. Thank you so much. My goodness. Well, um, obviously, as I mentioned to you in the email, of course, Chris, along with two other reviewers, will be reaching out in terms of doing a film review. Um, clearly, if you wish for me to step in and help with distribution, I have plenty of assets in that particular regard that I can help you with. On top of which, um, certainly, if it's okay with you, I'd like to consider, I'll take a look at my schedule, and if it fits, I'd love to screen it again at my big festival, the Art is Alive Film Festival at the end of September. And by the way, the woman you work with is lovely. Whoever's been coordinating the initial communication, absolutely fabulous person um so it was wonderful and orchestrated so well and thank you for the prayers and the thoughts and the patience and i i can't thank you guys enough for everything thank you for letting me screen it as well um and again the announcements as far as winners will be sometime tomorrow once we get done and relax and whatever have you and then we'll reach out about that information too now i have to let everybody go so we can stop this and then go to the next link which is our next two films if you can join us for the rest of the day i would love it my dear and i'll send you the interview about a week after we get it edited. Thank Sounds you, good. Sir. Anytime, my dear. All right, <laughs> folks, give me five minutes and we're on to the next block. We'll see you soon. Thank you.